so we can do it farhan you can start okay uh, hey guys today we will be in, uh, interviewing miss hamera for our um, project on house sparrows so um, how are you miss hamera i am good thank you very much for inviting me to this very interesting topic that you are chosen for this interview very excited to be with you that's great uh, would you like to give a brief introduction of yourself and how long you've been working with uh, wwf and other organizations absolutely so i am humaira aisha i am a wildlife biologist um so i work um on the conservation of wildlife species and their habitats um in pakistan and also in other countries um this has been 15 years for me almost to have worked in this field mostly with wwf pakistan and i had the opportunity to work in almost every part of pakistan where important habitats of wildlife are present um i work on many endangered species i work on many threatened species um such as the blind and the dolphin i worked with the marine turtles i worked on the freshwater turtles um i worked on the sharks i worked on the marine cetaceans which are the which also includes the whales and dolphins which live in the sea um um and so forth so uh since this project mainly focuses on uh, birds house sparrows so um what is bird cons- uh, conservation for you so what is the best part of building bird shelters uh, bird feeders uh, especially in urban places i think this is a really good question um and also um i'm very impressed to see that you have decided to take up this topic for your research um which was actually much needed so i think uh, before i answer to this question to as of why it's important to build um sheds for the birds and uh being more responsible for their care um we also need to understand to as of why this particular city of ours where we are sitting is important uh for birds um so lahore as you know is known as a city of gardens um and it's also a heart of pakistan and most of it is also associated to this um immense beauty history and also the link of the nature that is found in here um and it's not just for today but it's also maybe um, goes back into the dates of the moguls and sikhs and british era as um when the city started to shape up shape up as it looks like maybe um, really recently um but what has made this city in the past is a beautiful habitat for many creatures um now think about of all the old places that you have in city um the old gardens the ancient monuments the trees even the graveyards and the traditional bungalows i mean the really really old areas in the cities and the housing societies which are really old each one of them would have attached gardens um they have large expanses of lawns for example even the trees on the road side even if you still go to the mall road for example you find those traces of it so over the years they shaped up the city to become really precious habitat of many species of birds many species of small mammals and many more other species and those those trees also are the species of those uh, plants which are local to these areas and they have a very important role to play to regulate the weather for example and also to provide food um and so forth so which is why we we've always remembered lahore as a hub of variety of many species of birds um and there is a lot of research that has been done um and even um uh, so you are a young person so i'm sure you've also seen um places like lawrence garden lahore zoo um you know and even jinnah garden so i mean they're still offering some beautiful habitats um of many bird species so so this is a bit of a rational to think of if we used to have such a beautiful habitat which also means we might have a lot of bird types which are associated with these places right um so it's the very first study that was conducted i think that was back in late 60s so this is confirmed that lahore had about 240 species of birds and when i say species it's just not one type we have gotten about 240 plus species of the birds um but gradually as the expansion started to happen we've started to lose more and more species um and it was mainly attributed to the loss of habitat 
um, which is the trees and also the areas where the birds would like to stay. Um, the birds would, would, would uh, use those places to make their nest, uh, um, would, would use those places to have shelters. And when that started to happen, um, we started to lose that diversity of the bird species. Um, and this is why perhaps this topic that we have chosen came into also uh, um, into discussion that, okay, now this is also the time to think about that all the challenges that cities are, the city is facing, we also need to be more responsible to, to provide the shelter and the support to these birds who are in need, who've lost their habitats to many factors and challenges that we face. Right. Uh, that sounds really fascinating that um, the place that we, you know, currently inhabit that used to be like so diverse a while back and even is still but less. So um, now since our project mainly focuses on house sparrows, would you like to give a brief introduction of house sparrows and their origins or how they end, ended up in the place they ended up? So the countries they are in right now and uh, what uh, species they evolved from. So in pre prehistoric times, what species evolved to become house sparrows and um, the species that are closely related to house sparrows? This is a really good question again. And I think um, house sparrows every year, I remember once in a year is at least a time when we all try to recall this species. And that is basically the day when the World Sparrow Day is celebrated and that's March 20th. Um, and every year I got asked this question, but most of the time, well, other times of the year, we don't remember this species. So I think it's it's quite a fascinating species uh, for many reasons. Um, but what is also important, I think what makes this a very important species to discuss also is it the role it plays also um, into the ecosystem. Um, and cities like Karachi and Lahore used to be hubs of this uh, this animal and uh, sorry this this bird species, but uh, now there is hardly any place where we can see they are found in abundance. Um, so so you asked like you you asked like quite a comprehensive question. So I'll try to maybe answer it uh, as much I as as I could. So I mean globally, what we know is that house sparrows have gotten about twelve different subspecies. Um, and uh, and their habitats changes like drastically as we move on along the along different geographies and also I mean they are their biology is quite uh, flexible so they are able to survive but they are native to Asia they are also found in North Africa they are also found in most parts of the Europe um, and uh, I think it's and what the science tells us about then, well, about 10,000 years ago, I think that's a rough estimate that tells us that they are now associated uh, with the habitats that have been modified with by the humans. I mean, in the areas where humans live, they, they started to basically also settle into those areas. Uh, but how sparrows, when we talk about in the context of Pakistan, in the context of South Asia, especially, and when I say South Asia, this also includes big cities like Karachi, Lahore, Mumbai, Dhaka. So that's like the studies um, that basically they talk most about these species because they used to be known hubs for these species. Um, and they were natural habitats where these species were fine. But over the years, um, we have seen that these cities started to lose their diversity and the number of these sparrows. Um, so what the research tells us that there are a number of factors that have left towards the, this decline. So because they are declined, not only in Pakistan, but there are many other countries that have faced a similar problem. So I'll just speak about the combination of the factors that have contributed to this. Um, first of all is the habitat degradation or basically what we call fragmentation because cities are growing and now imagine I think what is the population of Lahore right now is 13 million plus I think it's over um, it's over I think it's nearly a crore uh, so you can double check the figure so and then this also leads towards the change of land use um, more urbanization more growth more development of the maybe societies where people live in, expansion of the business, changing of the um, removal of the trees, eventually basically destroys the habitat for these species. 
um, then pollution, which is which also comes in the form of agrochemicals. Um, they are the prime. I mean, they are really carrying a lot of importance in terms of uh, affecting the population of the species. And these rapid changes, um, not only just in the urban, but also in the rural and agricultural areas, uh, poor management of the waste, for example, in the bigger cities, um, they've also increased um, to uh, contributed to increase the population of many such species that affect otherwise the presence of these species. Now imagine, if you look at the skies in the Lahore, they are full of kites and crows. Um, and those species are basically, um, um, have a potential that they would outcompete the nesting and roosting sites of small birds, including the small house sparrows. And that is where, you know, um, you could see that how, um, how the waste and the improper waste managements could have the potential to increase or decrease the population of the species. Uh, so uh, do you wanna maybe ask any other question or do you want me to continue further? Uh, con uh, con by continue further, you mean talk about more uh, like um, do you sort have of. Any do you have any follow up question? Yes, I wanted to ask you uh, like what subspecies you mentioned something about the subspecies of house pairs, the twelve sub uh, subspecies. Uh, would you um, can you t tell you know the names of those uh, twelve subspecies? So subspecies means basically, so they uh, vary genetically. So it doesn't have to be a different name scientifically, but usually the last name changes. Uh, but I think one important thing that would might be interesting for your research and probably you want to consider this is that how do basically, uh, so how, how does their basically uh, biology and behavior is important for us to understand. Uh, from a very human perspective so if you want to look at the names i can send you this list uh, but i think uh, house sparrows used to be model organisms and i think it's not simple um, so and there are a lot of definitions that also define that as of why they are important to consider because they carry a lot of important historic values um, um, because of many other things and uh, i think uh, Okay, so um, can you like from prehistoric times? Hi, Brahan, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, so, yeah, so basically uh, you talked about uh, the um, the factors that uh, the factors that are affecting the decline of house sparrows. And uh, so you also talked about uh, the different species among uh, house sparrows. Can you talk more about like what uh, house, uh, house sparrows evolved from? Like if we uh, take it back to the prehistoric times. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Why not? Can you hear me now? Because I could not hear you for a brief moment and I, I thought I was talking to myself. Yes, I, uh, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, we did talk about where they are found, right? Um, and we also said that house sparrows basically like to stay in the areas which are modified by humans and they include farms, residential areas and urban areas. Um, and we also mentioned a bit about their biology and their life history. Uh, so I think it's, uh, so when we talk about revolution, I think the behavior is one aspect that is important for us to consider because, uh, and as of why they are linked to um, the kind of habitat we live in. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's my internet or your internet, but I think we keep on disconnecting. Can you hear uh, yeah. me now? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, I think it's one of ours internet. 
So probably let's just wrap it up quickly then because I think the internet isn't really helping us a lot. Uh, so um, do you want to perhaps uh, like uh, like uh, select another time for the interview? When no, the I think it, it depends better. upon how many more questions do you have because we've already, I think, spoken enough. But if you have like more specific questions, we can still continue for another 10 minutes. It's just my internet. I think, I don't know. Why is it doing like that? But we should continue. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, okay. can you shed some light on the diet of house sparrows? So, for okay. people wanting to help house sparrows by making bird feeders, what kind of bird seed uh, should they use? And, um, you know, what would be the nutrition, what uh, nutritional value would be um, okay. uh, good so, for? So, uh, so, we call them um, basically um, omnivores, right? So, but their diet, what we know from the research is primarily con consist of the seed, which are supplemented by some insects. Uh, so, they feed on insects, they feed on um, grains of all varieties, they feed on um, seeds, they feed on nuts, they feed on fruits. Um, and especially the house sparrows that we have worked on or we have researched in the urban areas, they tend to eat more waste seeds from the animal tongues, for example, or seeds from the field. Um, and they also, I mean, eat basically commercial bird seeds and wheat seeds. Um, and even the studies that were conducted in other parts of the world, they've also seen seeds, basically uh, seeds that they were collecting from the waste or tongues of other animals. Um, they were also eating on uh, cereals. They uh, And the insects make a very small portion of their food, but they can feed on it if they would, uh, if that is the option they have to feed on, right? Um, can you talk about the nutritional value? Uh, so what nutri nutritional value would be uh, good for them? What do you mean by nutritional value in terms of the proportion? Yes, so like um, if their diet consists like uh, this much protein, that would be like really good for them. They would thrive in uh, that sort of, uh, with that sort so of I diet. I suppose, yeah. So I think uh, majorly because they are granivorous. So I think seeds of all kind would be uh, more important. Um, whereas insects, they make small portion of basically their overall diet. Uh, but it's also important when you talk about building uh, sheds for birds or for feeding, um, I'm also assuming that you will be talking more about protecting those birds into their natural habitats and supporting the birds which will just be coming to those sheds to feed and drink water but not to put them into a cage because it's very important that we also uh, sort of uh, project this message that it is not good to basically uh, cage the animals or uh, uh, encourage any practice which basically promotes caging those animals especially which belong to wild habitats um, and there is also uh, some redundant and i think very bad practices that are going on which uh, people will for example find somebody selling those sparrows in the street which by the way is a major threat to them also that people capture them and then they sell them in the street and people will come in and they will release them off saying oh this this takes away maybe uh, uh, bad uh, uh, spirits away or it's basically they are uh, omens that are associated to that so those kind of practices are also pushing this species towards our disappearance so as a responsible citizens we should never be part of those practices um, and also always encourage to uh, promote the habitat for example because if we are planting more trees and trees which are uh, local species and um, if there are more green areas i think that is also going to be a big support that you can extend in addition to providing them those shelters and um, and the water points that you want to uh, basically develop for them. Um, so now uh, let's just uh, talk about the nests of house sparrows. How do they uh, make these nests? And basically what are the main materials that go into the making? Um, does the male do most of the work or uh, does do both genders split the work in making uh, the nests? And um, in what seasons do they like make these nests? So I think it's um, house sparrows basically uh, 
their nests are built between February to May. That is the period that we called is the mating and breeding period. Um, and their nest is basically uh, usually, you know, they are on the buildings and they are also on the trees. Um, and they also use those cavities inside the nests and buildings. So their nests are built from the dried vegetations. Um, they can also use feathers, for example. They also use a variety of strings, for example. Um, paper, basically, whatever is available um, easily for them to build their nest. And usually, um, even, and I'm sure you must have seen those small spaces within the walls where one brick is missing and their nest is inside that. Very basic material, maybe some just haystacks and they would build a nest here. Uh, but and then they lay eggs um, anytime into those um, nest during this nesting period that we just spoke about. Um, and uh, um, so, and I think usually their clutch size, I mean, which is the size of the um, eggs that they lay, it can be one to eight eggs um, at one point. Um, or sometimes it's, it's the four clutches that I have seen. And then afterwards, basically, it starts basically all the hatching and incubation periods. Um, so in terms of the gender, uh, usually, you know, uh, both male and female sparrows, they incubate the egg uh, when it's the time. And so to do it in short periods uh, for a few minutes each. So one goes out and the other one comes in and takes the duties. And this is how it goes on. And the incubation period for the nesting is about 10 to 14 days, I suppose. And, and once the eggs are hatched and the, and the chicks are out, then, you know, both mom and dad take up the responsibility to bring in the, the food and they feed the baby done by turn. So it's basically not one person which is taking up the responsibility. Yeah, so uh, do you believe that we should uh, replicate, uh, like sort of um, the nests that house sparrows have? and use the, mater the same materials for uh, making the bird feeders. Do you think that would bring a change to, um, you know, the, uh, the quality of bird feeders for uh, house sparrows? So bird feeders and nests are two different things, right? So birds make nests so that they can sleep in them, they can lay eggs in them, and then their chicks can stay or their juveniles can stay in them and they use them for protection. Whereas uh, they fly around and to go to those natural areas or the places where they can find something to feed on. So there are two different things. Um, we usually help uh, these birds to build their nests, for example, and I'm, I'm sure by this you're talking about the artificial nests. Um, in those sites where we know were important for their nestings, uh, but now they can't nest anymore because of the drastic habitat modification. Maybe there used to be a natural area. Um, there used to be maybe a historic building. Uh, there used to be a garden now where there is maybe a big housing scheme being built on or maybe there is a development going on of this kind that they've lost this habitat so in that kind of situation where you see the birds are coming back and they are in help so the need of in help so then you can start to think of okay how do we help them to place their nest but usually they are very adaptive to this process uh, the bigger issue is that if the the, the good places where they can nest and they can uh, make their nests are getting shrinking um, how are we going to be able to help them however providing them the feeders which is i think very important um, uh, idea to do is is a very good one so what we can do is that because they are not very specific in terms of what kind of structure they need but if we can just provide them those places where they can feed uh, with safety without being getting caught by the domestic cats for example um, or by the animals, I think we, we should definitely continue with the practice, especially in those areas where uh, where we know that there are limited uh, options available for them for this thing. Uh, right, so uh, you, basically, uh, you basically mean that we um, should make bird feeders, but since they're, like, they're not the same as uh, nests, it's uh, just important to place like a uh, like some water there, some food there, uh, just to uh, sustain house sparrows. Yes, so the nest, so the feeders and nests are two different things, right? So nests are very important, but I think uh, placing nest is not an easy thing. It requires also a lot of research to understand the biology 
and to see the need whereas feeder is important because then it just does not support sparrows but it also supports many other bird species which would come and feed on them for example okay um so uh, till when can you uh, sort of talk about this till when are you free to uh, continue the interview so we were booked for half an hour and i think we are pretty much near the time but do you have more questions to ask yes i do have like like many more questions but i think uh, if you are free at you know a later time we can complete those later so what you do for example then farhan okay send me the questions okay and probably we can have another uh, half an hour booked for this uh, not probably today but we can do it tomorrow would that work for you you are yes, on sir. holidays right because yes, i yeah because i, I actually work. have to go for another call so how about we do maybe tomorrow 10 am the same time but send me the questions first and let me know whatever you want to ask um would the 12 pm work for you uh, tomorrow 12 pm tomorrow is not going to be possible i can do 10 i can do 10 for sure i can do 10 so 12 to do i am occupied but i can also do in the afternoon so you can do maybe 4 o'clock yes i think the afternoon would be a bit better okay and also to like conclude this uh, interview would you like to say some words for like the youth of pakistan and just urge them uh, to something for the wildlife so if we are going to do it tomorrow uh, so let's maybe pr- probably do it today or tomorrow and we'll wrap it up uh, but send me the question where you have it right and also maybe specific questions to what are what are important points that you want to add into your uh, research idea okay. okay so so i'm setting us up for tomorrow for okay great okay. have a nice day you as well for her bye